A church member is just someone coming in and filling a few spot. Someone that belongs to an organized body. But as I use the word and terminology, a church member, I hope it broadens your mind a little bit better, and realize being a church member is connecting with those that come together in the body of Christ. This is where I want to... You know, I started off with an easy message and it kind of got a little harder and a little harder today. It is a little harder. Because this whole week, I was sitting and thinking, where have I personally as your pastor gone wrong? I sat here and thought, in my own personal walk as a Christian, where have I gone wrong? Who, who do I need to seek out? You know, Peter came and asked Jesus this important question. And as you open your church bulletins and you try to figure out what I'm preaching on this morning, you're like, whoa, he's going to preach on that? Why do I have to forgive? Where, why? Why do I have to forgive? Most of us have asked that question once or twice in our life. Most of us, we still hold grudges that has little to nothing left of remembrance of why you're mad at that certain person. Do I have any of those today, this morning? Don't raise your hands, because everybody's going to be looking at you. <laughs> and trying to figure out if it's them. But notice that, that we hold those grudges, we hold those unforgiveness, that we stay constantly mad at somebody or someone. Whether it's our spouse, most of you are sitting next to. Most of it's a friend. Most of them is a church member. Most of them may be a co-worker that somewhere along the line they've done something to you somewhere, some wrong. So the question is, this morning I have for you, is why do you hold that grudge? Why do you hold that grudge? A lot of us are like that. A lot of us want to hold that grudge because we think it makes the other person feel miserable. And boy, do we like to make the other person feel miserable, don't we? But you know, as I was sitting there thinking about this message this week and writing my notes and, and studying this and concentrating on this verse, I, I remember this, that Jesus, you know, as Christians we have sayings, don't we? Such as this. How many of us says this in our daily walk, our daily perspective day? Love like Christ. We're supposed to love like Christ. And then how, how many of us gets in a situation and we, we think of that old saying, what would Jesus do? How would Jesus respond to the situation we're in? Well, today I want to add another one. Today I want to add another one of those to you. That way when you're in a situation and you can't think of, man, what do I do? You know, as Christians, we're supposed to forgive like Christ. Look around us this morning. None of us deserves the forgiveness but Christ gives it freely to us. No matter how far we sin, how far we stray away, like Lonnie had said earlier before he played this song, no matter what we do, Christ forgives us. And as Christians, we should forgive like Christ. That person that we're holding that grudge against this morning, most of you are not trying to think of that person as I'm speaking, and most of us are looking and saying, hmm, have I forgave them like Christ? And so this morning, I'm going to give you a checklist, a small checklist of items that I want you to consider. And if you're holding that person in the back of your mind this morning, I want you to think about it. Have I forgave them like Christ? And this week, I begin to think of all these people that I have come across in my life, and I, and I begin to question myself, have I forgave them like Christ? So I want you to do the same. Because see, Peter came to Jesus with this all-important question. But like Peter, we as Peter, came, we come to Jesus expecting a human answer. When we ask this question, why do I forgive? Why must I forgive? We come expecting a human answer. Let me explain that. Peter was coming to Jesus and wanting a human answer. He, he wanted that answer, Jesus, to respond like this. Jesus, may I hold a grudge. May I be mad. May I make this person feel as miserable as person. May I make this person feel unloved, unwanted, undeservable. May I do this. This is the kind of things Peter wanted Jesus and how Jesus 
He wanted Jesus to respond. How many of us does that? When we ask that very same question. Well, today I want you to think. And I want you to answer your question, your personal question today. Have you forgave like Christ? So if you have your Bibles this morning, turn to Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. We're going to read this question, and we're going to see that we're supposed to forgive like Christ. And Peter was not ready for his response, but we're not going to go into Jesus' response. We're just going to concentrate on Peter's question. It says, Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother? Or sisters who sin against me up to seven times. Father God, we come to you. We thank you for loving us as we try a little bit every day to love you. We know our love towards you fails, but your love towards us never fails. Father God, we know that you forgive us freely. But Father God, we hold those grudges. We want to make that person feel miserable, unwanted, undeservable. But Father, help us understand, help us acknowledge to forgive like you. But Father, we, we think it's the other person. Well, sometimes, Father, we think that other person has to forgive us before we forgive them. Help us be the better Christian and understand the difference. Someone in this room today is holding your grudge. Help them embed this in their heart. Let them soak it in and understand it, Father God. Father God, in your holy name I pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Peter came to Jesus asking a human question, wanting a human response. But Jesus responded to Peter in verse 22. It says, And then Jesus answered, I tell you not seven times, but seventy-seven times. It wasn't that, you know... It was interesting as I was reading these verses this week, those two verses this week, something came on the radio and they was talking exactly about this verse. And it said the guy that was talking, I don't remember who it was, said, you know, it wasn't that Peter couldn't ask. 7 plus 77. It wasn't that Peter couldn't times it 7 times 77. Peter couldn't subtract 77 times minus 7. It wasn't there that the number was important. It was to get us to think like Jesus. It was that importance of all to, to forgive like Jesus. So this morning again, I'm going to give you a small checklist. And when you think of it, I want you to think, have you forgave that person that you're holding that grudge against? Like Jesus, have you forgave them like Jesus? Because now, a terminology that we use in basketball, the ball is in your court. When someone has wronged you, and most of us has wanting just like Peter was wanting, they want the other person to ask for forgiveness first, or say that they're sorry, but today I'm placing the ball in your court, and you're going to take responsibility, and you're going to forgive that other person. Because once you forgive that other person, even though they have they wronged you, they're going to get their wheels turning. They're going to be in shock and awe mode. Whoa, what just had happened? But the first step of forgiving somebody and forgiving somebody like Christ is admitting a wrong had happened. How many of us like to admit when we're wrong? No. Man, look how empty the room is. Look how empty the hands went up. It, the hands went up very quickly in this room. <coughs> Nobody wants to admit that they're wrong. Nobody wants to admit that the other person, it's either you or, or the other person, has to admit that somebody or someone was wrong. You may have been wrong, and that person may have been upset and caused something to harm you, but you got to accept that when you ask for forgiveness, when you give forgiveness, a mistake had to happen. A wrong was committed wherever it came from. Whoever it came from, whether it's the person giving it, hurting you, or whether it's you for not asking and seeking for forgiveness. Hey, you committed a wrong and I forgive you for it. It's hard to say those words because our pride takes responsibility. Our pride and our self-pride overcomes forgiveness. We don't want to admit it. 
We're humans. And admitting that we're wrong is something hard to do. Rather, it's something, hey, I forgot to take out the trash, or I forgot to do this or that. And we boil up and we get mad at each other, and then we don't want to seek forgiveness. Because <coughs> we, as humans, want to dangle it above their little heads. Like we dangle a carrot above a rabbit. We want to hold that thing above their heads and make them feel as miserable as possible. How many of us have done that sometime, some point in our life? Once again, whether it's a church member, or spouse, a friend, a co-worker. Think of that one person that you're thinking of now, and think of it. What would their reaction be if you went up there and said, Hey, one of us was in the wrong, but I'm going to take responsibility and I want to forgive you. Think of their reaction. The reaction, you know, they're probably going to pass out and fall on the ground because they were not expecting it. This is where the meeting between the two individuals comes to point. This is where it comes to the point that you admit something had to happen and you are taking responsibility for it and you're willing to confront the problem. Whether you committed the problem or whether they committed the problem, you're willing to take responsibility and confront that person and confront that problem. How many of us are willing to confront a problem? How many of us are willing to admit that there is a problem? Whatever the situation is, who is responsible, it doesn't matter who done it, but take responsibility. I asked yourself this morning, ask yourself this morning, have you ever been in the wrong? No, none of us have been in the wrong, have we? We're all perfect, we're all right, the other person's wrong. But the second question to this or have you ever been wrong? Does it hurt to be wrong? Does it hurt you or does it hurt the other person the most? The answer to that question is simple. It should be hurting you the most. You should be the one feeling miserable and broken, helpless, hopeless, hurting. But a lot of times we as the individual don't think about that. Oh, we don't want to think about that because it hurts our pride. The second, part, the second thing is to forgive like Christ. Is forgiveness gives you a different status. Once you offer forgiveness to that person, it gives you a different status. It gives you a different part of that relationship. It takes you from being the victim to the victor. See, when you're in the wrong and you don't ask for forgiveness over whatever the situation is, you're the victim. You're being held in prison, intact, to whatever that situation is. It may have been five years ago, it may be 20 years ago, 30 years ago, it may have been as, as quick as yesterday. But you become the victim in prison over the wrong. But when you seek forgiveness, those shackles are broken. That pain, that hurt, that guilt is set free. You become the victor over that problem, that situation. How many likes to be a victor rather than a victim? We can become a victim in a lot of things. But it's that once we're set free part of it. That once that we... We exceedingly admit that there's something wrong and we want to take responsibility for it, whether it's us or them, and we ask for forgiveness, that's when we can have a victory dance. But yet, we don't want to do it. A lot of us, we don't want to take the responsibility. See, when we were in that wrong, whether we caused it or they caused it, it begins to trade a power hold over you. It begins to control you. It begins to think you're better than them. It begins to think that you control that person over that situation. And every time they slip up, you're going to bring it up, up to them. Hey, remember that last time you wronged me? Remember that last time you hurt me? Remember this and remember that? Now, yeah, make you feel a little bit more miserable. How many of us is that? When we or in prison and in debt to our problems and unforgiveness to somebody, somewhere, we become that problem. It's kind of like mold. There's an analogy you probably never hear behind the pulpit. 
Have you ever watched mold? It starts out so small, so harmless. But if you leave mold just there, just for a little bit, it grows and grows and grows. And then it grows so much that it becomes harmful and deadly. Well, that unforgiveness is such as that mold. It's okay for a little bit, but then it grows and grows and festers and grows, and then it becomes deadly and harmful to you. It can cause a divorce. It can cause a church split. It can cause a friendship breakup. It can cause a work argumentation to cause a lot of people to quit at work. All because you do not take responsibility for whatever situation it is. You may accept apology from someone. This is the second part of this. From victim to victor. You know what another part that I didn't mention this morning? Is that a lot of times somebody may say, Hey, I'm sorry that I created this. I'm sorry I've done this. But you know what you have to do? You have to take the responsibility and accept that apology. But a lot of us, we don't want to accept that apology. Therefore, it begins to attack us. It begins to harden that relationship a little bit. It begins to break off that relationship, that hatred for that person. You must take responsibility and accept their forgiveness. You may take responsibility and say, hey, let's forget it and move on. Let's just leave it at that. We both sought forgiveness. But maybe you're that person this morning that I'm talking to. If somebody said, hey, I am sorry for the way things are, the things that happen, but I'm never going to fully accept it. It just becomes lip service. Forgiveness takes two people, not just one. And a lot of times forgiveness is offered through one person and not channeled through the other. But if you want full victory over what has happened, what is in the wrong, <coughs> remain that victim. Go ahead, remain that victim. But if you really want to be not that victim, then you better start seeking forgiveness. You better start, start getting on your knees and start praying to God to give you that, that willfulness to accept forgiveness. You may be here today and you may see that person, hey, they offer forgiveness thousands of times over again, but I'm not ready to forgive it. Maybe you need to get on your knees and say, hey, I need to learn how to accept that forgiveness. Because the third thing we can learn out of this verse that the Peter, the human, asked a human question to Jesus, we were wanting a human response to, is that forgiveness is wanting to be needed. You know, a lot of times, we're humans, right? Every one of us in this room are humans. You know what we focus in on? When somebody wrongs us, you know what we focus in on? Hurting them. How many of us have thought, plotted against in our little minds, of how we could hurt that somebody? Think of it. Rather, it's not, maybe it's not physical harm, Maybe it's not emotional harm, but maybe it is emotional harm. Maybe it is mental harm. We want to play with their minds. We want, we're want. we just so driven on focusing on hurting them. But maybe think about it. The next time somebody hurts you, maybe they're that person that wants to be needed. That person that's looking to channel something else. Maybe that's how they were hurt. And maybe that's how they were never forgiven. And maybe that's the only way they know how to process a friendship. Process a church membership. Process a marriage. Is to hurt that person just that way. Maybe this, that we, you know, they focus in on how they respond to being hurt. How they respond, how they are in the wrong. Well, if that person did it to me, that person did it to me, then I'm going to pass it on to the next person. Maybe not even bring it down. Just a little bit. See, a lot of us, we're like children. We're out on the playground, the children recess, and the kids see some way, the kids see a, a, a child hurts somebody on the playground or, or picks on somebody and then 
they pick it up, and they, they, they process it, and then they want to channel it down to the next child. This, as adults, now I'm speaking on the adult level, this is how we do it sometimes. The way we were hurt, the way we are unforgiven, the way we are, we just pass it on to the next person. Whether they deserve it or not, we'd rather pass it on to them. Man, this room is quiet this morning. Maybe you're processing these thoughts in your head. Maybe that you're thinking of that one individual. Maybe that one individual is someone just like that. Never knew how to seek Christ-like forgiveness. Never knew how to seek out and never give Christ-like forgiveness. So they're just hurting you. They're chaining all their frustration into you. Maybe you need to step up and become the better person <coughs> and give them that Christ-like forgiveness. That same love that Christ channels in you. That same forgiveness that Christ channels in you. Maybe you need to do that. But you know, there's a fourth thing that we get out of this verse. <coughs> forgiveness equals freedom. You hear me, church? Forgiveness equals freedom. That goes along with number two. Freedom holds you... You're the victim. You're imprisoned to that unforgiveness. But with this forgiveness, it comes with freedom. Now, in this phrase, is going to resonate some of you. And some of you is like, man, he's been preaching on forgiveness. And what he's about to say does not make sense. Maybe then you need to pray about that. When you ask for forgiveness, it is going to be risky. You're going to take a risk by asking for forgiveness. Because you will never know how the other person is going to respond. Remember, forgiveness takes two people. A forgives B. B has to forgive A. But a lot of times when person A, when person A forgives person B, person B does not want to get forgiveness. This is where forgiveness becomes risky. You may receive freedom from being that forgiven person. When you give forgiveness to that person, you may receive freedom. But that person has to accept it or deny it. That hurts. How many times have you asked for forgiveness of something you did and the other person does not want your forgiveness? Let it go. Let them think about it. They may be hurt. They may not want to accept your forgiveness. But let them think about it. You know, a challenge to forgiveness equals freedom is sometimes, a lot of times, 99.9% of the times, we don't want to be the first ones to offer it. I'm speaking to anybody in this room this morning. We don't want to ask for forgiveness. We don't want to give them that forgiveness. But take responsibility. Think of this. It takes two to create a problem. One's not going to create the problem. It takes two to create a problem. It's, again, it's rather in marriage, your friends, your co-workers, your church. It takes two. Sometimes there's a gang of them. Four or five. It takes four or five. But you know, in forgiveness, there's a lot of grudge holding. There's a lot of plotting against. There's a lot of revenge being fought against that person. Well, if they can do this, I can do it ten times better than, than them. But this here is where it becomes sin. See, forgiveness again is kind of like jealousy, kind of like those little, little tiny things in our life. Forgiveness isn't a sin. It is what you do with it that becomes a sin. So if you're holding a grudge or you're plotting against a person or you're plotting revenge against that person or group of people, that is when it becomes a sin. That is where it becomes dangerous. Now, are you sinning this morning because you held on to that grudge? Are you, are you, are you sinning this morning because you're holding on to unforgiveness? Are you... Are you sinning this morning because somebody has asked you forgiveness and yet you do not respond to them? 
Thank you, back. Are you saved this morning? Because you're holding on just a little bit? And put yourself back in that situation. Think of this. Maybe this will touch your hearts a little bit more. Tug on your heartstrings a little bit more. How would Jesus respond? Would Jesus take time and plot against them? Revenge against them? Hold the grudge against them? You know, as I typed that question out, I thought, you know, the Son of Man, the Son of God, hanging there on the cross, and he had the right response, Father, forgive me. There's the people mocking him, laughing him. Here's the people that held him a king a week ago. Beat him, spit at him, laughed at him, mocked at him. And he said, forgive me. Put yourself in your situation this morning and ask yourself, how would Jesus respond to it? Sometimes we need, to, we need to have that reality check. How would Jesus respond to the situation we're in? Because you can become the better person, ask first. Then it's up to the other person. Song leaders come. I want to read you one more Bible word. I want to read one more verse for you to think about this morning. Maybe this message has sunk in your head a little bit. Maybe this morning that you need to know and hear one more thing. Because I, 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 I debated on how I wanted to present the message. I debated and I crossed out and I thought about the scriptures this morning. And, and I, I, I had to include this in here this morning because this is the one of the first ones I read this morning, this week. Matthew 6, <clears throat> verse 14. It says this, For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your Heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sin, your Father will not forgive you. So let that sink in this morning. As you stand and have a song of invitation, let that sink in you this morning. Who's going to get forgiveness first? Father God, as the song of invitation is given, Father God, let this verse embed it in their minds. There's somebody here tonight, this morning, that needs to come and pray. There's somebody here this morning that has that one person on their mind. Let them recognize that one person. Maybe that they have received forgiveness from somebody else, but they have not yet accepted it. Let them come and pray. Whatever their decisions are this Father this morning, let this be an invitation of you, Father God. In your holy name I pray. Amen.